Uh, I often get asked how I colour and weather my track. Um, I don't actually own an airbrush, so when I weather my track I have to do it by hand. Uh, I actually find it quite therapeutic. What I do is I paint the rails and I use weathering powders. Uh, to date, like, I think this has worked really well. I've never had any issues. Um, the previous exhibition I've just done, no, no problems with pickup. And uh, I, I think it looks good, uh, as hopefully you agree from the pictures I've put up here. And uh, I'll show you how I do it. Um, the what I use to do it is quite cheap. I use paint from Wilkinson's and um, just the Humbrol weathering powders. So it's a very inexpensive thing to do, and it can be done um, if you've already kind of sprayed the area. Um, so like adding the powders can enhance what you've done already if you've um, already sprayed your track. Anyway, I hope you find this useful and uh, feel free to comment on the uh, video afterwards. So um, to weather my track, I use um, basic acrylic brown paint. Uh, this is the one I've been using. Um, it's from Wilkinson's Burnt Umber. It was two pounds. And uh, basically what I do is I just paint the rails inside and out. And I think it immediately looks a lot better than your standard uh, rail, which I think when you actually paint them, look a bit more model like. Eventually I'll get it to that kind of standard, uh, because what I do next is I use weathering powders. You could, if you wanted to, leave it at that. Uh, that's what a new railway line tends to look like, uh, but it doesn't tend to stay like that for very long. So what I use is the Humbrol weathering powders I use um, I use dark earth. I also use smoke.
So the next stage is you need to use a track rubber on the rails after the paint has dried. I tend to use the uh, the Pico track rubber. I found this to be very reliable and it's relatively cheap and can be picked up from most model shops. So the next stage after you've uh, cleared the rails uh, using the track rubber is to actually add the weathering powders. As I previously mentioned I tend to stick with the Humbra weathering powders but there are plenty of us on the market at the moment. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you that next stage now. So to do this you're going to want a nice uh, soft brush which is quite small. Again, this is from uh, Wilco, it's quite cheap. So what I do first is I start with the, <coughs> excuse me, the dark earth. I'll just give that a, another brush and just kind of work it in. And if you gently blow on it, it works in even better into the ballast. You get a nice um, If I just take you there, so this is how it looks at the moment. And what you can do as well, if you're not happy with it, it's a bit too dark, you just run your thumb over it, and it can take a bit off. And what you just work down basically. So I, I use the dark earth on both sides of the, um, the rail. Like so. I was going to say, when you blow it, it does just makes it a little bit more subtle. So the next, I'll just show you that first. This is what we started with. This is where we are now. So what I like to do next is <coughs> I add a bit of the smoke, which is um, which is a black basically. And I use this uh, primarily in the center. Uh, I, although it says smoke, it does, it looks just like diesel really as well. So you just take it over the middle gently. Black's a bit more intense than the brown. But what you get is a nice kind of mix then. And I'll just, um, again, you, if you form, you can kind of smudge them together. This is what you end up with. 
Now what I've got here, which I might come and change, is I've got some ballast on top of the sleepers. Again, you can come back and just uh, pick that off with a craft knife. Um, so yeah, what I'll do, I'll just carry on and I'll do this section of line and I'll uh, come back to you once that's done. So, once you're happy with what you've got, you then need to seal it in using uh, matte varnish. As you can see, this is what I've got. I'm quite happy with that. And it looks quite realistic. It wasn't really too much work. So, what I'll do is sort of give it a good shake. I think this code was AD6049. Spray it about that. Short bursts. So we're back again, and as you can see, it has, with it being matte as well, it's um, it's helped make the weathering powder a bit more subtle. And actually, with the pressure from the can, it's pushed it right down into the little crevices. I'm really happy with that and it also because you're using matte varnish it takes the shine off the paint which you've used to do the rails with and overall I think it gives you a nice a nice colour it's knocked some, some of the ballast which I did the other day didn't set so I'm going to have to come back to that but what I like is when you weather it um, it looks better with the concrete track and points which aren't concrete it's a more gradual kind of flow and not so obvious I just think it looks really realistic I'm sure with an air um, an airbrush you could get a better effect um, but I don't have one of those to hand and I've been quite happy with this uh, method for quite some time now uh, anyway what you need to do is um, you need to let that spray set for about half an hour and then when you um, when that's done come back with the track rubber again and um, just rub it off and then it should be ready to go.